a gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode number 135 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is September 9, 2020. It is our 174th day under COVID-19 restrictions and the most bizarre day of any so far during this unfortunate pandemic. Uh, it is 10.30 in the morning here in San Francisco, the seat of our empire. And we are coming to you from the landing above the Imperial Garden today because we want to show you just what it looks like right now. And I don't know if the uh, video is going to do this justice or not. We hope the audio is quite good today because we are outside with a lot of background noise. So pardon any audio problems, but it's, it's like night here. It's very, very strange. Like something out of the twilight zone. <laughs> Presented for your approval. No, we won't go there. Well, let's begin with our national days. It is National Teddy Bear Day. We still have our original teddy bear. We will post a picture of it right here. Wonderful Weirdos Day. Hello. National Wiener Schnitzel Day. Oh, we can go for some of that. Very popular dish in Israel, oddly enough. And International Sudoku Day. We were never a fan. No, sorry. Florida Man. Today's Florida Man. A Florida Man seeks a threesome in a Craigslist ad to, quote, ride out hurricane. Yes, they spelled it H-E-R-I-C-A-N-E. -E. Don't know if he got his wish. For our San Francisco story today, we rely on John Ralston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco, because it was on this date in 1875 that Lada's Fountain is dedicated at Market, Kearney, and Geary Streets. Lada Mignon Crabtree was born in New York City on November 7, 1847, the daughter of English immigrants John Crabtree from Lancashire and Mary Ann Liv Livesey from Cheshire. John Crabtree kept a dusty bookstore, which Charles Dickens repeatedly visited, reputedly visited, pardon me. In 1852, Marianne reluctantly let Crabtree go to California in the gold rush. Marianne and Lotta Fountain in a, followed rather in 1853. When they arrived in San Francisco, Crabtree was not there to meet them and English friends had no clue where he was. Crabtree, somehow got in touch with, with uh, the, from the city, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Crabtree somehow got in touch from the town of Grass Valley in the Sierra Nevada, foothills. After failing at gold mining, he wanted to open a boarding house to be run by Mary Ann. Mary Ann had noticed the intensely theatrical atmosphere of San Francisco, and in Grass Valley, she enrolled Lada in a dancing class given by a man named Bowers. Coincidentally, another Grass Valley resident was the notorious, our countess herself, Lotta, sorry, Lola Montez, born Eliza Gilbert in Ireland, who had scandalized Europe with her liaisons. Lola taught little Lotta what she knew about singing, dancing, and acting. Lotta gave her first public performance in 1853 at the age of eight. Small, she would, be a five foot two adult, Lotta was a dynamo with red curly hair and infectious personality. She was the darling of the mining country, apparently sleeping in the saddle between engagements. Audiences were rowdy, but Marianne was a strict chaperone and manager scooping up coins and bills thrown to Lotta on stage. In 1856, the Crabtrees moved to San Francisco. Lotta made her legitimate stage debut in 1859. She was performing for San Francisco's dominant producer, Thomas McGuire. In 1864, sorry about that, the Crab Trees went to New York. Lotta toured the country, billed only as Lotta, and had plays written for her by age 20, and became the best known and highest paid actress in the United States. Marianne managed to manage her astutely, buying real estate from ticket sales in the towns Lotta played. 
Always grateful to San Francisco for the start it had given her. In 1875, Lotta made the generous bequest of a fountain, a Victorian structure possibly sketched by Lotta. It was unveiled on admission day today, September 9, 1875. And it has been there ever since. It's been moved a little bit uh, in one direction or another because cars used to hit it. Now there's an island around it. It's where we gather every year for the earthquake commemoration uh, because that's where people gathered for the commemorations just after the earthquake. I think starting in uh, 19, 1911, I believe. Don't quote me on that, sorry. And unfortunately, it is not in the best condition right now. We encourage you to contact the San Francisco Arts Commission. We'll put a website up here. We have numerous times. It is sometimes covered in graffiti, which does get cleaned off, but there's one piece that has been missing for many years now. It broke off, it was taken off, we don't know which. The Arts Commission has always said they intend to repair it, but never have. So let's save Lotta's fountain. Well, let's move on. Our other history today. On this date in 1850, California is admitted as the 31st state of the Union. So happy admission day. 1880, President Rutherford B. Hayes visits San Francisco. I wonder if we met him. Don't think so. 1908, Orville Wright makes the first one-hour airplane flight from Fort Myers, Virginia. 1926, the National Broadcasting Company is created by the Radio Corporation of America. So NBC was created by RCA. 1945, the first bug in a computer program is discovered by Admiral Grace Hopper, or Hooper, I believe it's Hopper. A moth was removed with tree tweezers from a relay and taped into the log. So the first computer bug was literally a bug. 1950, the first use of a TV laugh track by the Hank McCune Show in the U.S. <laughs> there we go. 1956, Elvis Presley appears on the national TV for the first time on the Ed Sullivan Show. 1957, U.S. President Eisenhower signs the first Civil Rights Act since Reconstruction. 1966, John Lennon meets Yoko Ono for the first time at an avant-garde art exhibition. 1967 is the first test flight of the mighty Saturn V rocket. 1971, 1,000 convicts riot and seize Attica Prison in New York. Attica, 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 yes. 1971, John Lennon releases the Imagine album, a great record. 2015, Queen Elizabeth II becomes Great Britain's longest reigning monarch at 63 years and seven months, beating the previous record set by her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. Congratulations, Queen Elizabeth. Our births today. This may be a problem. Our births today. 1754, William Blind, naval commander, mutinied on the bounty. 1928, novelist Leo Tolstoy wrote Anna Karenina in War and Peace. 1890, Colonel Harlan Sanders, Colonel Sanders himself, founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken, or as we know it today, simply KFC. 1919, Jimmy the Greek Snyder, gambler and sportscaster. 1935, Chaim Topol, actor, Fiddler on the Roof, Tevye. 1941, Otis Redding, Georgia? Is that his last name? Or is that where he was born? I'm not sure. Anyway, Otis Redding wrote Sitting on the Dock and co-wrote Sitting on the Dock by the Bay, which is about Sausalito. 1943, Pink Floyd's Roger Walter, Waters, pardon me, Waters. Oops, sorry. 1946, one of the fifth Beatles, there have been numerous, Billy Preston, great keyboard player. 1951, actor Michael Keaton. 1952, Angela Cartwright. Uh, Make Room for Daddy, Lost in Space. And 1952, Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics. And today is the birth date of our beloved cousin, Jill Harris. So happy birthday, Jill. Always on admission day. Deaths today, 1976. Chairman Mao, Mao Zedong, Chinese revolutionary and China, the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, uh, died in the state in 1976. 1976, pardon me. Whole thing's got me thrown for a loop today. 
1978, Jack Warner, a Canadian-American film executive, president of Warner Brothers Studios. I think we got a jet about to fly over. Ooh, we're almost done. 1980, John Howard Griffin, American photographer and journalist, author, wrote Black Like Me, a book well worth reading. And 2003, Edward Teller, the Hungarian-American physicist, father of the H-bomb. Thought he was related to Teller of Penn and Teller, but as we did our research on this, we found out no. One source said he was, but the other sources said no. So, there you go. Our quote today, rather appropriate from the Torah, Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 through 23. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness will spread over Egypt or San Francisco. Darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or leave his place for three days. Well, we'll see how this goes. And it's now, yes, 1045. So you would think it was about maybe 5 a.m. right now. Well, hopefully this bizarre day gets less bizarre. And don't forget, uh, as we do a little outro here, we are accepting tips, uh, Patreon or PayPal. There's your information right there. Also, if you'd like more information about what the Countess and I normally do, here's our website, uh, sftimemachine.com. Click on any of the more information buttons for Drag Me Along tours, Emperor Norton's fantastic San Francisco Time Machine, or San Francisco Food Safari. You'll find a lot of information, interesting links on there, if nothing else. We are hoping to tour again soon. Don't forget that we will soon be celebrating in almost a week, Empire Day, the 162nd anniversary of the beginning of the Nortonian era with the Emperor Norton Legacy League. So here is the link for that. Uh, well, just go on the Emperor Norton Legacy League on the Facebook. Sign up, you'll get a Zoom link right before the event. Uh, make an Emperor Norton Sunday, the link for that, or rather the recipes on there. Be prepared with an Ask the Emperor question. And then also, if you want to, be prepared with what do we mean to you? Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, especially on a day like this, and therefore stay healthy. Don't take unproven cures. Wear a mask. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.